Welcome to Chalk Talk, presented by Option Central, the premier source for all things option football. Option Central Chalk Talks are recorded and edited by CompuSports Media Services and delivered in streaming video format. Now sit back and get your pencil and paper ready for some option football education with another Chalk Talk from Option Central. Uh, we're talking with uh, Joe Daniels today, a defensive guru who uh, does a great job. He has a great website, and uh, we're going to talk a little defense. And uh, Joe, how are you doing today? Great, Tony. How are you? Real good. First question, what's your overall defensive philosophy? You know, a lot of people talk defense and they this, that, and the other thing, but everybody, regardless of front or coverage, they always have a defensive philosophy. What's yours? Yeah, ours is going to be we're going to force the ball to the outside. We're going to try to spill the ball to the outside. Uh, and then we're going to have our force guys on the edge who, who really need to be probably our best, some of our best players. Um, we use something called the umbrella principle, which uh, is, you know, we kind of got it stole from TCU, but I don't know where it originally came from. And the idea is basically that our, uh, our front six uh, or seven, it could be depending on the front, are going to be spill guys. They're going to control the inside half of their gap. They're going to take blockers on uh, with – uh, through their inside, force the ball to spill to the outside. We're going to have force guys on the outside, which in, in this case would be our strong safety and our will, are going to be forcing the ball to turn back to the inside, or what we say is force a change of direction, that they've got to make that guy either bubble back uh, or turn back inside. And then we'll run into the football, and our big thing is pursuit, 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 uh, passion for the football, run to the football, uh, getting, getting at least nine hats to the ball every time. Uh, is our goal, and we're really one of the things that that's changed for me over the years is I really don't care about uh, three four four three four two five. Um, it's it, as long as you have a philosophy, I believe that that uh, whatever you're doing is sound, uh, and, and follow your philosophy. You can really line up just about anywhere uh, as long as it fits those base principles for us. Who are the uh, three major influences on your defensive thinking? Uh, the first defense that I ever learned was, uh, was that really learned the details of it was the Miami 4-3, um, and so the guys that, that that I learned that from, I guess, that's where I come with my philosophy uh, in terms of the spill and force, so Jimmy Johnson, Tommy Tuberville, um, and, and everything that I could learn about that particular defense, uh, just really learned as much as I could about it. Uh, Ricky Kuhn was my uh, defensive coordinator when I was in Ellsworth College out in Iowa. Uh, he and I was coach linebackers out there, and uh, it was my first and only coaching college uh, job at a junior college out there. And learned the four-two-five defense from Ricky, and so he had a major, uh, major influence on um, on the way that I coach football and the things that I believe. And everything else has just been has come together from a lot of just a ton of different sources. Uh, you know, just I couldn't even beyond beyond those guys. There's a million different people. Mark Tomlin was my first head coach uh, that I really learned a ton from. Bruce Carroll, I was my head coach for six years. Uh, both guys know a lot about defensive football, um, and, and I learned a ton from them. So it's been a lot of different places. I learned a lot about defense from listening to offensive guys too. I think a lot of guys discount that. I'd much rather hear an offensive guy tell me how, you know, what gives him trouble a lot of times. That's why I try to kick defensive guys out of my room when I speak on <laughs> Talking about a 3-4, and, and, and a lot of people tell me they go to the 3-4 because it puts more speed on the field. Um, what go, go through position by position, starting with your nose guard. What do you look for in a nose guard? Do you look for a big, heavy... Uh, you know Neanderthal there, or do you look for a quick nose guard that can can uh, uh, pick a pick a side and and beat the center? Uh, look for. Yeah, you know, I think one of the differences in for me in the three four and, and the four two five, and and our three four is a one gap slanting uh, pressure type of three four that evolved okay. from the four two five. So I'd like to have. I'd love to have that big dominant nose. I'd love to be able to two gap that guy. That's my ideal is a guy who in certain situations, he can just dominate the center. He can two gap it um, and just do it through sheer, you know, power and dominance. But the truth is the difference between 
the three four and the four two five for me is in a four two five I need a big dominant three technique. In the three four defense, I can use either one. I can get away with and I say get away with. I'd love to have the big dominant guy, but if I just got a quick, fast guy to play that nose, I'm going to do that too. And I think the either one, uh, you know, your wrestler type kid, uh, either one is going to be effective uh, in the three four concept. Mm -hmm. What about your defensive ends? Are they? Uh, is there a difference between the defensive end to the Sam side as opposed to the defensive end to the Will side? The way that we're running it, there is, um, and again, because it's evolved from a 4-2-5, um, we're going to use a quicker weak side end. Uh, we're going to use a guy who can who can get, uh, because we're going to be bringing the SAM in pass, in pass pressure about 70% of the time, the strong side end rarely is going to have contain. And, you know, the, the trend, especially in high school football, is to take your best athlete and put him at quarterback. So we've got to keep that guy in the pocket. So I need a more athletic weak side end uh, to whereas I'm going to have probably a more true defensive lineman style guy at that strong side end. Okay. To me now, when I look at your 3-4, it looks like that strong side defensive end is really a tackle. And if you took your 3-4, you took your 4-2-5 uh, and kicked it to the, mm -hmm. to the uh, field, it would be a tackle, the S would be an end, mm -hmm. and then your your backers would be Will, Mike, and, and Jay. Is that almost kind of what Th it is? That's the evolution of it, yeah. Now, we're the evolution of it is we're getting more of the Sam backer standing up, getting involved in coverage. Um, our base call would obviously, you know, would be to, you know, right. if you do this, you're back in your, you know. Four, you're in a 4-2. Uh, so we're just giving a different look and getting back in the 4-2. Um, but we're getting more into getting the – that's a base call. Uh, the thing about the 3-4 is while we're going to be slanting back into that and, and looking like a 4-2-5, we're going to be a lot more flexible with our pressures uh, and than we are in 4-2-5. Mm -hmm. What about uh, position-wise now? Uh, the difference between the SAM and the WILL – and what do you look for in the Sam? What do you look for in the Will? Is Will more strong safety type? And the Sam more linebacker type? Yeah, exactly. So your Sam is is a uh, is a smaller defensive end, and your Will is a uh, is a is a bigger safety. You know, that's kind of what you're looking at there. It's, it's your hybrid concept there, um, and it's all ideal. You know, it's it's who do you have? But yeah, the, the Sam is going to be much closer to a linebacker than the Will is. Um, but we're looking for a really good athlete at that Sam spot, not just uh, you know. To whereas the Mike can be a uh, tackle to tackle guy, uh, the Sam needs to be able to, to drop out and play a flat. Um, you know, he needs right. to be able to peel with a back. Those kind of things. I think I think it's a really neat concept because it's it's obvious they could easily stack the Sam behind the end and kick the backers the other way and be in a three three. Is that, mm -hmm. yeah. do that? Yeah, the concept is a multiple front concept, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a big advantage because, uh, especially in high school football where you can't actually recruit particular guys like you can in college, although some high schools do, but that's another story. That's a whole um, different deal, isn't it? <laughs> we don't want to start on that one. <laughs> yeah, but it is, uh, is, is that one of the reasons that you evolved to this, this scheme? Yeah, it's it's year after year of you know thinking you're going to have a certain type of guy or having a certain type of guy one year and the next year, uh, not only making adjustments in the off season based on your personnel, but then um, where I've been at for the last most of the last 12 years was with Fort Lee uh, was on our base, so we got guys moving in and out all the time with military transfers, uh, and you've got to adjust to what you have, and so that's where we've developed you know I've worked to develop a philosophy that. It really doesn't matter if the guy is a half yard the one way or the other. If we're a three four team, we'll be a three four team. If we're a four three, we can be a four three. Uh, it, you know, four two five. It, it's what we've got, and we can adjust that philosophy. And sometimes in the middle of the corner? season. <laughs> what about your corners and uh, and your uh, secondary? How do how do you what are they what are their characteristics? What do you look for? 
I like to play a lot of press man. Um, so we'll play we'll play a mix of cover three and cover one. Uh, so with the corners, I want guys that can be aggressive. Um, they don't have to be burners, so they don't have to be able to get out on an edge and I mean they don't have to be able to you know run a four four or anything like that. Uh, they need to be able to to be aggressive to get in a guy's face to be coachable because I think press technique is all uh, technique. I mean it's it, it, if you can disrupt the release then you can win a lot of balls and, and you know you cut down on the routes you have to defend because you're not going to be defending a lot of hitches you're going to be defending a lot of fades. Um, so I like to play I love to play press technique. We've we've found that with with enough work and seven on seven that just about uh, not anybody, but a lot more guys can play it than you would think. A lot, you know. Whenever I talk about this, guys think, you know, uh, we don't have the athletes to play cor press corner. Um, I can promise you that um, you can play it. Uh, you got to get some pressure. You know, you can't let them sit back there all day, but you can play it. So um, you know, we like to have height. They seem to always be short, but uh, we like to <laughs> we like to have some good height. Uh, we wanted to have decent hips, be able to open up and run. Um, have some good hips, but really be coachable uh, and be able to get up in a guy's face and play some press uh, and then play over top when we close that out. That's How about free safety? Is he a, a run guy, a fill the alley guy? Yeah, free safety is going to be your 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 alley guy, your all over the place guy. Um, when we're, you know, we're able to rock this coverage, but again, the strong is going to be down a lot, uh, a lot more, uh, and the free is going to be over top. I believe that if you've got a free safety, if you don't have a free safety who will run the alley, um, then you cannot play any sort of single high, whether you're rolling to it or not, you cannot play any sort of single high safety coverage if you don't have anybody in the alleys because you'll get a force, you'll get a spill, and, and the, the free safety, you know, we were talking about the umbrella earlier, the free safety is the tip of the umbrella. If he's not there, um, you're out of luck. So that free has got to be a guy who will come down and make tackles. Um, he doesn't have to, you know, I'd like that to be a guy who's a big hitter, but I really don't care. I just want him to get people to the ground. Um, and I'm not as concerned about his pass coverage. So I don't need a center fielder. If, if I've got a center fielder, I might sub him in there on third down, but I'd rather have a glorified linebacker uh, who can run back there. Um, to whereas the strong is a little more like the will. He's, a, he's that hybrid, uh, you know, linebacker, DB type guy. Um, probably a little more like the free in that he's a, he's more athletic, uh, but he doesn't he does come down a lot, play the flats, play force, that kind of thing. So the two corners are your cover guys, and everybody mm -hmm. else is your tackle guys. Is that yeah? We're not in the box. Yeah, I mean we're we're not in the box. You got to stop the run um, as much as possible. If we don't stop the run, nothing else matters. So would it be safe to say your philosophy is stop the run and pressure the pass? That would be a good fly, yeah. <laughs> that would be it, that, right? that would be safe to say. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this. When you play press man, do you match up, like say in the formation you have there, would your will now be matched up on the Z in press yeah, man? Yeah, well, we would end up in, if we're in, if we're playing cover one, uh, which is mostly what we're going to play. Right. We're going to be, yeah, something like that. So our strong and our and our and actually they're too tight there, but uh, we play seven off and they force and, and we found that they can force from that seven off the receiver uh, and the will and the strong uh, and we feel okay with that because that will is going to have help free safety help over top and the, and on the uh, strong will have the H man to man then correct no the, the yeah the strong yeah, I'm sorry yeah the strong safety will have the H man to man and then the uh, the Mike and the Jack will. Um, Combo the banjo R. or fiddle the R, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Okay, great. And then you that's with a four man rush and then now say if you're gonna send the J, then the Mike would have the R man to man, correct? Yeah, if we were gonna send him, get into a five man concept, and then we would we would put him on there. Um, I like zone I like to zone blitz if we're gonna be doing a lot of five man pressure. Um, mm -hmm. but because we do, I mean we're in a you're obviously in a mismatch with the uh, with the R on one of your linebackers. Um, right. and, you know, that's a definite mismatch, so I like to use zone blitzes a good amount in that situation. But, yeah, if we're going to bring five-man pressure with one of the uh, middle backers, then that will put the other one man on. So when you zone blitz, you're going to play cover three or are you going to play cover one? Three, three under three deep, yeah. Okay. Now are you going to stay pressed in cover three or are you going to back off? 
We'll use a press bail, uh, show it as late as possible. I like to press bail cover three. When we, even when we run cover three just normally, um, mm -hmm. I want them to use some press bail uh, technique where they're, where they're getting, you know, showing the press and then getting out of there pre-snap uh, as well as I can um, so that it's not a giveaway all the time when it's done and when it's man. And we play some off man too. Some catch man or something like that. They, they call it all different things. I mean, I, it's just like cover two. Some people say too soft, too this, too that. Mm -hmm. but too soft reminds me, of, it's pretty hard for the quarterback. It's too soft in quarters is almost the same thing. But uh, They look the same to me. And I, yeah, the two yeah, read, I mean, two. I've been in staff rooms where we spent 20 minutes on whether it's too soft or, or quarters. So, and I always say the same thing. If, if they're... If you can throw the hitch, it doesn't matter what the coverage is. You can throw <laughs> yeah, the hitch. Right. Yeah. You know, too soft quarters. I mean, the quarterback has 1.6 seconds to figure this all out, and we're we're taking 20 minutes to decide. So, anyway, it's probably uh, not going to be right all the time. <laughs> now let me ask you this too, Matt. If they if they bring in tight ends personnel, mm -hmm. do you match up personnel wise, or do you just use the people? That you still have on the on the uh, in your base defense. Yeah, I mean, 90% of the time we're playing our best 11. Pardon me. So we're playing our best 11 90% of the time. Okay. So if they went so. two tight ends, would Will then like if uh, Z moved up on the line of scrimmage as a tight end, would you just move Will to the box? Yeah, we could we could do that. Um, walk Will up. We can. Get him up here. Get him up. You know, I don't know if, depending on the guy, if he's going to play up tight arm, if he's going to play in a one by one, um, right. or or even, you know, just in a three by three. He's still, we're probably in a two tight situation. Um, you know, if we were playing cover one, we would have to have him back. Uh, but in a two tight situation, you know, a heavy run deal, we're probably playing yeah. cover three. So he's good up there. Um, we're in a position where, you know, we can show a balanced look. It doesn't look like we're outmanned. It doesn't look like we're, you know, it doesn't just get the offense salivating about four verticals and that type of thing. Yeah. Right. And then how do you adjust to uh, three by one sets? Uh, if we get a three by one set, like a tray or, or just a true? Both. A tr trips okay. and with the tray. Okay. Coverage wise, we're a. Uh, our base rule is quarter, quarter, half, um, so that we're going to get, and we would be flipped over here, but it's fine. Um, we're going to get uh, a quarter, quarter, half look. We're going to get that strong, strong out. Um, and ideally, we would, you know, I, if we were in this situation where he's rolling down, sorry, if we were in this situation where he's rolling down, that would be our quarter, quarter, half. We can do that. We can do it either way. So that'll be our that'll be our base look. So we'll go with that. Um, I used to play him splitting two and three. Uh, since there's no uh, offensive guys have apparently taken control of the of the rules, and uh, there's no holding calls on the edge now. Is that true? <laughs> is that is that a fact now? Is that a fact of football? It looks that way. <laughs> so there's no holding calls on the edge now. So every time that I put this guy in there, he comes down, holds the of him and they run around him. So I, I couldn't keep him I couldn't keep him splitting the difference. He has to go outside of number two or we can't force the run out there. Um, so he ends up uh, five by one outside of the number two receiver and we get our free over and we get free slay in deep quarter, uh, corner play in deep quarter and then the corner on the backside. Either playing deep quarter or what we're more likely to do is play him man, play him press man and we used our wheel backer in a hang technique, which is all we call it. Um, mm -hmm. If he gets a back out, he'll work with the back out. If he doesn't, he sinks, and he looks for those crossers coming back. So you get the four verts out of trips. He's going to sink with four verts. The, uh, the, thing that, the, the thing to me, if I was a defensive coach, that would bother me more than the holding because it, holding is just rampant, especially up front. I mean, I, you know, like when they call holding is, is shocking. But most of the times, the only time they really call holding is if the guy is in is outside and uh, he the uh, the 
off, uh, offen- offensive guys holding him from the inside so he can't chase. Then they right. call it. But otherwise, yeah. they don't call it. But, no. but the thing that would bother me even more than that is – now, I've seen – I was watching – really, since I retired, watched a lot of games on TV. Mm-hmm. And in the bowl games, there were some RPOs where the guards – were further downfield in the slant. Mm-hmm. Now, how on earth are the linebackers going to read that? You can't. Have no chance. If the guard <laughs> fires out on your J, how on earth could he possibly defend? You know, a slant behind him. He can't. Right. There's no, no way he can tell. So uh, they really have to. Uh, they really have to enforce that rule a lot harder than they are right now, in my opinion. Because you're putting those linebackers in uh, in a no-win situation. That's an offensive guy talking now. You know, no, no, it's, this, this I've, been, I've been looking at it. I was on the rules committee. I wanted to eliminate hash marks and just put it in the <laughs> middle of the field all the time. So, yeah. you know, but but really, that's really unfair to those inside linebackers when you can fire a guard out on them. They're five yards deep, and you fire a guard into them. Every linebacker in America is, has been taught to, he comes, you come. Right. And uh, and to and it, it's stealing throwing a slant behind it, but it's also illegal. Would you agree with that, Joe? What's your thoughts on that? It's, it's at all levels. You know, the RPOs have not gotten as big in our area uh, as I know they have in some other areas. We see them, but not you know not every week. Not everybody's doing them. Uh, but I've been looking at a lot of FL stuff. You know, they have the NFL Game Pass. Um, and the Panthers RPOs, and just watching them do this, the exact same thing, and I'm watching them against these, you know, NFL linebackers who have been training their entire life. They have no chance. That guard fires off, they're gone, uh, and they're just yeah. eating them up with it. And it's, you know, why? It, it's available, so you know. Well, we've been, you know, I I did RPOs for 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 decades, and mm-hmm. most option guys. When they, uh, especially split back rear guys, when they threw the uh, dump pass, you know, it was kind of an RPO. You either threw the dump or pitched it. So it was kind of like the first RPOs I kind of remember. We did it with, with every draw I ever ran was an RPO. But uh, but we were we were careful to not like when you do it off a draw, you're not going to have linemen downfield. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And we right. did. We have that flash off the triple option as part. Of, Part of our our triple our gun triple, we always did that. But the flash was always caught behind the line of scrimmage, so we never had to worry about that either. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I see right. when I see the guards downfield as far as the slant, then there's something wrong. <laughs> you know, I think that has to be changed. Otherwise, uh, you know, the defense is really uh, in a even more an unfair situation than than before. Uh, right. How about the, uh, the tray set with the tight end? Do you basically do it the same way? You just put – Yeah. And one of the things I'll mention here is that if we're playing a zone read team, um, I'll just – one of the things that we started out in this front four was to get a more athletic Sam linebacker responsible for the quarterback. So if we right. play a zone read team, we will set the front so that our Sam is sitting for quarterback uh, and these five can basically play on the on the, um, on the the zone. Uh, if we get the tray, then in that situation, we will have the Sam on that side. Um, one of the things about the tray formation and the tray look was it really caused – it didn't cause a major problem, but we did have to check in when we were in a 4-3 defense. Uh, and so I like the fact that we don't have to do anything particularly special for it here. We're still just going to play it the same. Um, strong safety outside of number two, unless he – you know. Uh, is a real wide split, uh, and then the corner seven off, one inside, free safety, playing quarter quarter half. Mm-hmm. You know the, the when when uh, 1999 when I start running the gun triple, uh, the thing I didn't that steered me away from the zone read was I felt like there was no answer to squeeze and scrape. Mm-hmm. Right. So for example, if you can do it well, you know I. And everybody I asked, I asked the, the guys who were really successful with it, like Kevin Wilson. He was at uh, Northwestern at the time. 
and uh, they they had no answer for it. They just said, well, we'll stay away from it. Mm -hmm. so I never wanted that to be my base run if I was going to have to stay away from it with one stunt. You know, right. is it, do you do that against zone read teams? How do you defend yeah, zone? Yeah, we're going to go with three ways to defend zone read. Um, the base way for us against uh, – against a um, – in this situation, the, the base way would be he's got quarterback as he's C-gap. Mike's going to be on the on the dive. Um, but what we'll also do is have uh, a Q-tag where we're going to send that guy directly to the uh, – have him come down hard. Uh, and we'll, we'll kick him. The other thing about that it is we'll you – know, since we're multiple front – We'll line up basically in an over front uh, against his own read so that we can get that hard bend down the line so that if we get um, him releasing down inside that we can bend. We'll bend him and get the mic, or it'll be the jack probably, uh, sitting for quarterback. And then we'll also fire. If you get two on the edge, I think it gives you a lot of problem. If, if they're not going to bring a guy in, in a pitch relationship, which we see a lot of that. We see him with, with nobody in pitch relationship. In that case, we can get the wheel down there uh, and get him fired for the quarterback uh, and get these guys pinching. We're always going to come, and then we'll usually come with a zone blitz that we like, like an Amer I like America's Fire Zone type stuff uh, right. to come down and get to uh, off the weak side edge. So we're always going to have at least three things in the playbook for a zone routine. Uh-huh. Well, that, that's uh, the – Again, the thing about the zone read, a few things. Number one, because uh, I ran, ran the zone read, but only as a complementary play. Mm -hmm. And I ran it basically as a give and just right. window dressed the the, uh, the uh, quarterback part of it. But the thing I, I uh, didn't like about it was it was hard to get pitch relationship. You know what I mean? Because the, the, the zone read guy is going in the opposite direction of the pitch, where in the gun triple, he goes to the same side as the pitch. So it's easier to get that pitch relationship. That's why you probably don't see many teams having, having a pitch man with his own lead. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things with the pitch, one of the things that solved that is the RPO, because now you can right. throw the zone read bubble off of it. Right, uh, exactly. Which, to me, is just a pitch. I mean, all that bubble is is your pitch guy. So whoever your pitch guy is against the option, he's got the bubble. Um, but a lot of guys don't don't coach it that way, and that bubble seems to come open. But um, that's how they I think they've solved that problem. Right. Oh, absolutely. And uh, you know the the uh, and they do the same thing. The RPO the slant off the backside. In this case, if you had kicked your backers away and the slant was open, they would they would throw the slant mm -hmm. to X there. And they, right. or the bubble, you know, depending on which way they're going. In this case, they would have to throw the X or the fade, uh, throw the fade or the uh, slant to X as the pitch phase. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what about uh, when when you see empty and some of the uh, like the air raid stuff? Do you do do anything different with that? Are you more of a uh, you know, do you adjust your thinking to that? Our base against the uh, against the air raid, I guess the air raid against the empty. Um, you know, our automatic empty check is a zero, uh, and then we will. So that'll be our that'll be our base call is to get into a. Um, We're gonna rush six. And bring six and get pressure, uh, and then the other option for that is to play. Uh, essentially a quarter, quarter, half, uh, your know, normal trips check, uh, but obviously not in the man coverage uh, aspect of it. We'll drop off uh, and play a cover, play a quarter, quarter, half type of deal against it as well. Uh, but, you know, again, for us, it, it's going to really depend on what they are and who they are. Uh, you know, we usually just carry a base empty check. We're going to bring pressure. We're going to not even, um, we, it's tiger cat blitz. Um, what we're looking for out of it is to keep six eyes specifically on the quarterback because, again, he's the biggest run threat that there is. And so that's why we want to do it. We want to keep eyes on him to keep him from running, force him to get this ball out uh, and, and get it out quickly, but keep him in above all else. 
Um, when we go to the zone, that's just to give a different look against teams that actually run a lot of empty. Uh, so when we get into those empty or, or even an air raid, um, you know, when a team actually really can, uh, you know, read your coverage, we're going to have to get in some different looks and, and show some different things. How about uh, uh, when you when you're say in a two minute situation or uh, when you uh, you're uh, not I'm not going to say prevent, but you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. In other words, you're up say uh, four points. Team has to mm -hmm. get a a touchdown to beat you. Do you adjust your coverage, or what's the coverage you go to in that situation? Yeah, we're going to go to a. a really a true cover four. In the past, we've done a lot of different things. We used to run a, a cover two. We used to run quarters. All those were fine. Um, but if we're just in a, not necessarily a prevent, but in a um, in a situation where we really need to uh, keep them, you know, we can't give up any big strike type of thing, uh, we're going to get into a, a four deep situation there. Uh, we'll probably, we can get into a three-man rush. You know, that's part of the deal. Or what I like to do is instead of getting to a three-man rush, the Will and the Sam uh, in the flat, we may sub out that Sam. We very well may sub out that strong safety um, or move the strong safety, you know, swap the strong safety in for the Sam and bring somebody else in, depending on personnel. But um, I'm not a big fan of a three-man rush, so I'll probably still bring one of the linebackers, probably the one who's the best blitzer. And then get the uh, get the other guys in the flats in a four deep three under. One of the advantages I see with a three four, with what you're doing, is you don't know who is coming. Mm -hmm. In other words, like you're gonna have, you know, typically a three four team is gonna rush four. The trick is who are the four. Right. And that's uh, to me that's that's one of the big advantages of the three four defense. Is that do you feel the same way or? That's just, absolutely. Yeah. I, I felt like in the four two five, which I I love as far as a base concept, lining up, you know, just lining up. We're going to play this down in and down out. I felt like the four two five, and that's why our three four is very closely married to what we were doing in four two five. Um, I felt like as far as a base alignment, that was the best way to play it. But the fact was that Sam Backer was you know what was what was our strong end. And now our Sam Backer. Uh, he was coming. You know, he was a he was a defensive end. Uh, those two inside backers were there. Um, your two edge guys. The only way that I could bring uh, what were our strong safety, weak safety, or overhang safeties in the in the four two five concept. The only way that I could bring them was to go into a cover zero. Uh, I didn't have any other way to get them coming than to get into a cover zero. Uh, now I can bring any one of these, not just these front seven. I can bring any one of these nine uh, and still run. A three under three deep, uh, run a cover one. Um, you know, we, we could do anything we want there. I think that's I think that's one of the biggest advantages of a uh, of a three four uh, defense, in, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, looking at it from an offensive standpoint, the thing I didn't like about defending a th uh, or attacking a three four was you really didn't know who was going to come. So we had to have we had to have uh, protection checks to handle that stuff. Where in a four-two-five or a four-three, even you know, it's your standard protection will be fine. Right. You know, with this, yeah, you can run your bob stuff, and it's fine. Yeah. A little bit different. What about in now? Let's flip this situation and say, okay, they're ahead four. They have the ball. Do you get into another defense to get the ball back? You know they're going to run it. You know they're mm -hmm. going to try to kill the clock. What do you do then? There's a few things that I like uh, that, that, again, the 3-4 lends itself to. Um, the one that probably, uh, you know, is, you know, say you get something like that. Um, the, the first one that comes to mind is to just kick down into a bare front. Um, and what I like to do with it because that backer and again if I've got that if that nose is that stud who can truly just jack the center up throw him away then great will two gap it if not he's mostly going to be slant strong uh, slant to the strong side uh, and then we'll have a mic plan for it but 
I can get into that or I can play it uh, here either way. Um, like a 40 or 40i uh, kind of technique with these guys. But get into something where I'm going to load up that front. We can get into a goal line front too. You can obviously get into any of your, you know, since we're playing a multiple front, we can kick those guys and get into a goal line front. Um, I can sub guys in. But as far as our base stuff, I like to get into a bear look. Mm -hmm. I guess and, I need a corner over there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a situation where you know you have to get the ball. You have to get a stop. You know they're, they're probably not going to throw it. You know they're, they're looking to kill it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, right. and, you know that's, uh, that's, uh, that's good. That's a good answer, I think. You know. Last question before we, we call it a, a, a day. Any any uh, thing you do differently to defend the jet sweep or the you know the jet sweep read or that you're seeing now or do you just play your base defense and and uh, play your base techniques? Yeah, it's because our you base. Have a, I, a, a, you know, like when I looked at your base defense, you have over the thing. An, another advantage of the three four is that you have overhangs, mm -hmm. which makes the right. jet sweep a little bit more difficult right off the jet uh, right off the get go. Like it's like blocking that Sam is not going to be an easy thing. Right, and and one of the things that we look at from the start is if it's a true jet, if it's a real big jet sweep team, then we might uh, what we've done at times um, is let that Sam kind of get up the field a little bit. But for the most part, what I always stress is that this is still an option, um, and we teach our guys option responsibilities, and then we teach them that there's only one, you know, option is option. Uh, you, you have your responsibility. So if this guy comes across and and you've got the jet read, you know, so we've got this guy leading, he's the outside guy. He's he's essentially the pitch guy. Okay, so we're going to get down on that uh, if I'm slanting, you know, if I'm slanting inside, obviously. It will depend on the way that I'm slanting. If I'm slanting outside, the sand would be there for it. Um, but if I'm slanting inside, this is my quarterback player. You know, he's my C-gap player. He's my quarterback player, just like he would be. Uh, in, in any other option, here's my pitch guy out here. Now these guys can get more involved. Quarterback, free safety can get more involved on you know your jet sweep guy, which is is replacing your pitch. Um, right. You know, we teach the same as we teach zone read bubble. You know the bubble guy is is the yeah, pitch. That's great. I, I think that's super. I, I think that's a great approach. And you know the the thing about uh, if you take that approach um, of defending things the way you would defend the option and have every aspect covered, I think you'll always be sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're, and you're always going to run into a situation where being sound isn't enough. You know, if that if that uh, jet guy is just, you know, if it's Tavon Austin out there, you yeah. may have to get an extra guy on the on the jet guy and sacrifice a little bit for the quarterback. You know, that's a that's a situation where we our base way of playing it is, is absolutely going to be sound. And then if we need to make an adjustment because athletically we're outmatched, uh, we got to make an adjustment, and, and that just you know that happens. That's part of coaching. Yep. Before we conclude, Joe, tell tell us a little bit about your website. Tell us a little bit about what you have going on. Uh, I know you have some great material out on defense. Uh, give us a little heads up on that. We do a little bit of everything now. Um, it's JoeDanielFootball.com uh, is the website, and uh, I do the podcast is called Football Coaching Podcast. That's where. If you're not familiar with with the site, um, you can just go to jodanielfootball.com and and listen to the episodes there, or you can find it on iTunes. This football coaching podcast, uh, and we've done now 147, 148 episodes, um, one of which you were uh, on yeah. uh, back back a couple of years ago, I think. And yeah. um, so we, uh, you know, the podcast is really the place to start, I think, and. and it's a lot more than defense now. I used to sell a lot of different products. Everything now is under one umbrella of the Joe Daniel Football Insider membership. So that's all the eBooks, which we've done eBooks on 425, 335, um, spread, you know, some spread run attack, zone read type stuff, uh, pass protection. I'm a big offensive line guy, uh, as well as defense. Uh, and then we've got our e-courses, which are, you know, hours of video instruction on 4-3. Uh, 425 um, pistol power offense, which is a pistol, uh, you know, power based, uh, but really flexible uh, attack that we've been running for a few years. Our offensive line course, 
Uh, we've got tons of drills. That's all under one thing, which is Joe Daniel Football Insider uh, membership. But yeah, the place to start would be the Football Coaching Podcast. If you're if you're looking to take some some coaching clinics with you, uh, obviously if you're looking at this, you like football, so. Those are sort of, those are another way to get some more more uh, football coaching with you is football coaching and podcast. And courses, you go through the uh, the actual technique of teaching this defense. We go deep into everything. Yeah, there. I don't sell playbooks. I hate playbooks. Um, you know, the, the, the idea of downloading hundreds of playbooks. Nobody tells you how to run any of the stuff that's in there. Um, so I I hated that. Uh, so I've done courses where we go into from the ground up. If you've never coached football before, um, you know I I constantly fight with people about this, but the 4-2-5 is the 4-4 is the 6-2. So if you're taking over your son's youth program, first time you're coaching, you can jump into a 4-2-5, our 4-2-5 e-course. We start from the, the ground basics and and build that defense, whether you want it to be a 4-2-5 or a 4-4 or a 6-2 or whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Uh, it's all the same principles and, it, and, it, and teaching how to coach defense and how to understand defense. And the same thing on the offensive side. When we do our pistol power offense system, it's a system of here's you know how you put together your offense, how you uh, choose your formations, how you uh, teach your blocking schemes, why you use these blocking schemes, uh, you know how you game plan it, the whole deal. Joe, thank you very much for your time. I, I had a great time uh, doing this, and uh, I, I I like what you do, and I like your website. I've been on there, and uh, I would recommend it to anybody. Thanks. I appreciate for coming it, on. Tony. Hey, thank you very much. Take care. You've been watching Chalk Talk. Chalk Talks are a production of Option Central, the premier site for all things option football. Ready to improve your option football coaching skills? It's time to join OptionCentral.net right now.